You heard me. Stop trying to go for some ridiculous record. Unless you fancy the idea of fanting. Fanting. What the heck is fanting? <laughs> Allow me to break the ice. <clears throat> My name's Stormy the Wolf. And today I'm gonna show you how to stay c c c cool and f f f f person. Where did all the snow come from? Snow is a myth. Sorry. That's better. Because the last thing you want to do is pass out only to discover your fursuit has been ripped apart in order to save your life. But yeah, let's talk about how to stay cool in fursuit. You don't want to pass out cold just because you pushed yourself too hard in fursuit. It's extremely imperative to keep your body's temperature and cooling system in good working order. Especially if you're in fursuit. Because it's basically the ultimate test for it. Think about it. You're covered in flu from head to toe, which is definitely out of the norm, lest you live in a place like Siberia or something. And should your body fail this test, the results can be pretty catastrophic. So whether you're brand new to suiting or you're a seasoned veteran, Let's talk about how you can keep your chill underneath that fancy carpet of yours. Water! The basis of all life. Without it, we wouldn't exist. This is without a doubt the most important thing you need to do while in first suit. You need to have plenty of water. Of course, you need to have a good meal now and then too. Really, you should be drinking water even if you're not in suit, but it's doubly important if you're in suit. Because it's incredibly easy to get caught up in the moment giving out hugs, and spreading smiles, but like it or not, you gotta take care of your body. While your persona might be loaded with superpowers, the rules don't always apply in this dimension, aka the real world. The human body is a mound of flesh that secretes a salty substance known as sweat or perspiration to keep itself cool. You can experience this for yourself if you stand in front of a fan after working up a sweat, and if you're sweaty enough, it can feel like you just walked into a refrigerator or something. And although it's a sticky and smelly thing, it's a completely natural byproduct of our bodies. And if you live in a hot climate, or you're exercising, or you're just super busy all the time, it's totally normal. Nothing to feel embarrassed about. And where does sweat come from? Water! And if you have no water, you can't sweat. And if you can't sweat, well bad things are gonna happen. So be sure to drink plenty of water while you're suiting. I actually had nearly a whole bottle of water before I started filming because I tend to unfortunately sweat when I'm recording in suit because I have to turn off the air conditioner and I have all these lights around me and computer screens. It gets really hot in here. Also, maybe get a water pack because they're really nice to have and they'll save your handler space with carrying things. And depending on how hot it is, I might go through as much as an entire bottle of water every hour. Like, if I'm at the outdoor fursuit parade at Anthrocon, your entire body is undergoing a massive stress test if you're walking outside in the heat while in full suit. So be sure to drink enough water so you don't end up like that one episode of SpongeBob. But you gotta do more than just drink H2O, like wear Under Armour or some sort of equivalent. Under Armour is a type of sweat wicking fabric that is very popular in the fursuiting community. But what does it do? And what the heck does sweat wicking even mean? Well, basically the sweat wicking fabric pulls the sweat moisture from your body and into the fabric itself. It's absorbed and through its high tech weaving patterns, the moisture is forced through the gaps of the weave pattern and basically ejected from there. In a nutshell, it makes your body's cooling mechanism far more efficient, especially if you're first suiting. Like when I first started suiting, I didn't have any Under Armour and I got exhausted almost immediately from the excessive heat. And as soon as I got some Under Armour, the difference was like night and day. Not only was I much cooler, but I had a lot more energy and time to fursuit. Now, I can't tell you exactly how it all works, probably because of corporate trade secrets or whatever, especially if we're being brand specific, but this is the general idea. Heat gear has been highly recommended in the suit community, and although it's a little on the expensive side, if you regularly full suit, it's 100% worth it. Ice packs or cooling packs. These things aren't mentioned too often in my experience and I think they deserve a little more attention. They're a great way to cool down after fursuiting or just when you're taking a break, especially in the summer, if you're crazy enough to go outside fursuit during the summer, because I am. I had a friend offer me one at a library convention 
which took place in the middle of the summer, I think, July. And the air conditioning wasn't working properly. And I had to keep going up and down a flight of stairs, so it was like a godsend to have one of these. Just be very gentle with them because if you're super, super hot and you put something on you that's super, super cold, it might not end so well. You know that feeling where you're taking a hot bath, but it's like super cold outside and you get out? Yeah, not so pleasant, is it? Anyway, be very, very gentle and slowly place the ice pack around your neck, back, or wherever, and obviously do it underneath the suit. Or better yet, just de-suit first. If you really want to go all out, try something like an easy cooldown performer's vest. They work great, but you'll need somewhere to refreeze them after use. Something you might have issues with at cons, in which case, I would get a cooler and just fill it with lots of ice. <sighs> also, a word of caution, be aware this may not work with some form-fitting or skin-tight fursuit. You will need a lot of wiggle room to use some of these. Like, I could use one just fine in my bodysuit because it's very loose-fitting. And if you decide to use these things, then please make sure they're completely sealed and that they're not leaking. You don't want any water leaking onto your suit, or worse, um, cooling gel leaking everywhere. That would be very bad. Something else you should do while you're suiting? Take breaks. You heard me. Stop trying to go for some ridiculous record. Unless you fancy the idea of fanting. Fanting. What the heck is fanting? Unless you fancy the idea of fainting and having your suit just ripped apart. And if you're at a con, locate the Headless Lounge first and use it as much as you need. They have ice cold water, lots of fans, and in most cases the room is super cold. Ah uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of fans as well as my own fans. Like you, who are all so awesome and so are my puns, am I right? <laughs> but yeah, fans, they blow lots of air. They're a simple, yet clever marvel of electrical engineering, driven by motors and powered by a battery or two, like this one. If you plan on fursuiting or even partialing, this is an essential accessory, which I briefly discussed in my fursuit accessories video. But what kind of fan do you need? I mean, you don't want to get blown away by how many kinds of fans there are, right? Okay, I'll just... I'll, I'll just stop. Stop with the puns! Why do I do this? <laughs> the most common and popular type of fursuit fans are these O2 Cool Fans. You can find these on Amazon, eBay, or even the dealer stand at your furry convention for around $10 to $15. But if you want to really take it to the next level, you could get a fursuit head fan. But basically, the way they work is it's usually a computer fan that has some Velcro wrapped around it and you stick it inside your fursuit mouth like this, and you can just walk around all day and that fan will just keep blowing and blowing, and you don't have to hold it in your mouth because the Velcro attaches to the inside of your fursuit head and it prevents it from falling out for the most part. Sometimes you can find these for sale at the dealer's den, but one thing you really want to be careful about, because there are many shapes and sizes of fursuit heads. That includes the mouth opening. Some fursuit heads have really big mouths, and other times they're like really small, like mine. It's very tiny. You don't want to get a fan that's too big and you can't fit it in there, but you don't want a fan that's too tiny to where it won't attach to any part of your fursuit head and it just like falls out. So what I would do personally is if you really want one of these, consult with a dealer first and send them the measurements of your fursuit head and they'll usually offer you a good solution from there. Also, if you're commissioning a suit and the suit maker offers the option to install a built-in fan into your suit head, maybe look into it. Another thing you could try is use a foam base instead of a resin base. Now, what I mean by this is resin is a much more solid and non-permeable material. Resin is awesome for fursuiting realism, adding all kinds of physical details, good for avoiding mold, mildew, and moisture buildup, but it also prevents airflow, which is something you will be begging for after a while. Treble's Lee head, which she bought from Bakari, has one built in, which is really, really awesome. You're gonna need all the cooling you can get if you're wearing a resin head, simply because airflow is restricted around it, lest it passes through any of the duct work around the ears or the eyes and the mouth. Now, I'm not telling you to not use resin, but as a general rule of thumb, you'll get better cooling overall with foam, simply because it allows for airflow. Partialing, which is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm wearing my Kigo because it's really hot in here. If the weather forecast says it's gonna be hotter than a Carolina Reaper, don't feel obligated to bring out the whole kit and caboodle. Don't full suit if you think it's too hot. Heat's not a good thing for fursuits to start with. Remember, there will always be other opportunities to fursuit if the weather's not on your side. 
And speaking of weather, you should first sit either in the morning or the late afternoon if you want to avoid the hottest part of the day. And if you really, really, really hate summer weather and have this obsession with winter and mythical snow, <clears throat> try to attend conventions that take place during the fall or winter or early spring. Sleep. I get it. This is way way easier said than done for a lot of us, myself included. Remember the 6-2-1 rule for fur cons? Yeah. Try your absolute hardest to get a good night's rest, or you'll be met with lots of consequences. One of which is your body's internal thermometer getting very confused. Like, if I get very little or no sleep, then I decide to the first suit the next day, the heat exhaustion hits me much, much faster. My body lacks the energy to cool itself, which in fursuiting terms is a very, very, very bad thing. And amusing Interestingly enough, if I decide to not fursuit that day, I'm actually freezing. <laughs> it's like one extreme or the other. My ability to breathe also goes down the toilet. It's just an all-around bad day if you don't sleep, so please get some sleep. Please. Lastly, remember that everyone's body is different. Some suitors might only be comfortable suiting for 30 minutes, others might go for over 3 hours. Don't push yourself just because your best friend can suit for like 4 hours without breaking a sweat. It ain't a competition! Fursuiting is literally cardio. That's why there's a shirt for it! You have to build up your resiliency first. What I do know is the longer your fursuit, as in the more you go out fursuiting, like I don't mean fursuiting 8 or 9, 10 hours a day because that's insane. I mean, like, the more cons you attend, the more fursuiting events you go to, the more your body will adjust itself, thus increasing your endurance potential, if that makes sense. Basically, you'll get better at fursuiting for longer periods of time. But don't get mad if you can't seem to, like, break the two or three hour mark or even the one hour mark or even the 30 minute mark. And that about wraps it up for this week's video. What do you do to stay cool in fursuit? Got any tips or ideas that I haven't mentioned? What kind of video should I do next? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Or if you didn't like it, um, that's fine. I don't care. The cold never bothered me anyway. Share it with the other furry friendos and subscribe and ring the bell and follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Oh my god, I can't keep up with all these social media apps. <laughs> anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye!